I'm Richard Gisbert, and this is Al Jazeera's Playlist, the show that brings you the best in musical fusions every week. On this edition, an in-depth look at the world of Islam and heavy metal music. These seemingly strange bedfellows have come together in a region that is steeped in religion, but rocks to underground metal. <laughs> The best rock is a religious experience. We're on the road from Dubai to Beirut, talking to the metal heads and musicians who make up the Middle East's burgeoning metal scene. All coming up on The Playlist. This is not the Middle East of newsreels and Western stereotypes. This is the underground world of hardcore rock and heavy metal. And it's taking place across the region in bedrooms and basements away from the periodic condemnations of governments and religious rulers. Metal music has been trickling into countries like Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria from the West since the 1980s when bands like Metallica and Black Sabbath before them introduced power chords to the Middle East. By the 90s, the voices of authority tried to stem the musical tide in a series of satanic metal crackdowns that in some cases actually saw metal fans imprisoned and the music banned. But the metal movement has survived that, and it's still growing, finding fans amongst Middle Eastern youth who are searching for music that speaks to their experience. We're devoting a full edition of the playlist this week to the story of heavy metal and Islam, the religion, the resistance, and what these two seemingly disparate movements have in common. from listening to metal and from playing metal live, to me, is unparalleled, basically. Metal music is all about simplicity. It's about being honest to yourself, first and foremost, and standing up for your rights and, you know, having a voice. There's something very liberating with just staring anger and evil in the face and just, um, just saying whatever is on your mind. This is the sound and fury of metal from the Middle East. Loud, liberating, and on the rise. A musical export from the West that has taken root across the region. Metal arrives in the Middle East in the late 80s, early 90s, and it really starts growing underground, much in the way it did in Eastern Europe before the Iron Curtain fell, but maybe 10 years behind. But it takes off really quickly, and by the mid-90s, you have really mushrooming metal scenes. The Middle East has been gaining a lot of popularity in the world stage, and the metal industry and metal music as in general kind of feeds on, on revolution and change. Maybe metal is starting to emerge in uh, a few other countries in the region, uh, and uh, we view that as quite good, I think, quite a positive thing. Middle Eastern metal is not just a Muslim phenomenon. Israeli bands, Orphaned Land, and Bet Zephyr are in the thick of it. Muslims and Jews are both finding something in this music that just seems to fit. It's like we, we bought a canvas in the USA, we brought it here and we paint here a painting which is like the whole painting of, of the Middle East and Israel. Orthodox Jews, when they pray, they call it, they daven, so they bob up and down while they're praying. 
Muslims chanting the names of God, but just doing it, they get into the rhythm. When you add the drums and the intense beat, what do you have? You have head banging. And so it's a very easy step from doing that in the mosque to doing that at the club. The best rock is a religious experience. Metal in the region is a unique blend. Heavy helpings of Western rock and thrash guitar laced with elements, instruments, and lyrics from the East. When we are playing, when we are composing, we are coming from the Middle East. Uh, we have Oriental roots, and uh, we are using Oriental instruments, and we are using Oriental beats, we are using uh, uh, scales, uh, riffs. So the whole music got the atmosphere of, of it's not uh, the same music where you hear in other parts of the world. It's for this area. If you listen to our music, you'll find some hints of some oriental feeling, uh, you know, oriental touches. Being from the Middle East, being an Arab, I feel like this, this comes out very naturally. And what, what we love about it is that when we listen to it, we don't feel that it's intentional. Heavy metal is heavy metal. Wherever, wherever you listen to it, wherever it's played in the world, heavy metal is boundless. It's, uh, it's heavy metal. They're bringing their own influences. It sounds Moorish in places. It sounds very progressive. A lot of it's very, very inventive. But the bottom line is they're pulling the same sort of influences that every other heavy metal band is in the world, which suggests that it really is a global phenomenon. Metal is just the starting point, and from that point we are going to a journey, which is a very Middle Eastern journey. For fans in this region, listening to metal is not just a hobby, it amounts to a political statement. And it's an outlet for young Muslims to voice their anger, a reflection of the chaos that often surrounds them. There's a lot of things that, that are happening in, in, in this region that makes people actually attach themselves to this kind of music. I think um, the region actually lives the style of heavy metal. It speaks to a need of young people who are marginalized from their own cultures. You know, they feel marginalized from this global Western dominated culture and they need a sense of identity and community. And that also, by itself, I think, is, is, is a form of, of a little bit um, escapism. Like, culturally, um, I'm, I'm not even here. This isn't really what's going on. I'm, I'm totally into something else right now. I think where you have stressed out people, you will find angry music. It's the only music that can reflect their daily life. The story of when you hear a track, you can see that it's talking about you. I'm angry and uh, I want to listen to our music. Metal music deals mainly with venting. 
placing the aggression in something that's that's not a violent form, and it's it's kind of a kind of a form of therapy. Catharsis is the first step to critique, and then critiquing their society, even if it's from a marginalized place, is the first step to changing it. But cultural change can come slowly in this part of the world, where authority figures from the religious realm have attacked metal and called it a threat to the ideals of Islam. We are there for the music, and the music there is a language. Despite which race you come from, which country you come from, which religion you are in, it's a unity. I, I don't think all the Muslim metal listeners are uh, atheists. You can actually practice your religion. You can go pray in the church or in the mosque and listen to methods. What's the problem? Religion and metal can coexist. Metal exists by its own merit as a musical form of expression. Full stop. The first part of our look at the world of Middle Eastern heavy metal and the musicians driving the movement. If you're looking for an instant replay of that item or any story we've ever featured on the program, they're all up on the website. Just go to aljazeera.net slash English and look for the link to playlist. We're back after the break with part two of Metal in the Middle East, the underground scene in Iran, and the open air metal festival in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> 